In this example, we're going to take a look at the Quick Engrave toolpath, whilst using some specialist tools which are spring-loaded so that we can engrave over uneven surfaces. We also take a look at its drawbacks of not being able to specify exact cutting depths and then ways in which we can encourage more cutting depth by applying more pressure to the tool. So let's just go to File, Close. So we'll start by opening an existing file. So we'll go to Open an existing file and then in the Project folder we're going to open the Quick Engraving Vector Drawing.crv file. Okay, so here we have a basic sign that we're going to use to demonstrate the quick engraving toolpath. So let's go and switch over to the toolpaths tab on the right hand side. And the first thing we're going to do is set up our material. So let's go in and use the set option here. Okay, so the material that I intend to cut into is going to be a very thin brass material. So we're going to go with a thickness of 0.1 in here. Our X0, Y0 date and position will be in the lower left hand corner. Our Z0, we're going to set that on the material surface. Then you're going to want to check over the rapid C gaps above the material, ensuring that your clearance plunge, home and start positions are all safe and appropriate for your machine. So let's go ahead and press OK. So let's start by dragging a selection box over our text to create the selection. With that selection, we're going to go into the Quick Engraving Toolpath. That can be found using this icon here. And if we click on that, that will open the Quick Engrave Toolpath. Okay, so this form is set out in a similar fashion to the other toolpath forms. So at the top, we have our tool selection over here. Uh, then we have our strategy selection options within this area here. We have toolpath specific parameters that we can enter in here. And then we have an area to specify the name for our toolpath. Now in the quick engraved toolpath form, we also have a further option at the bottom here to select the post processor code directly from the form. So let's start at the top and we'll work our way down. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is select a tool. Okay, so if we use the select option here, that will open up the tool database. Now the quick engraving toolpath is designed to work with specialist engraving tools. Now in the tool database, we have two tool sections that are relevant to specialist engraving. We have engraving and we have specialist. And we're going to look under the specialist section of the tool database. Okay, so here we have the most common type of tool that is used and that is the diamond drag tool. This is an industrial diamond which is then dragged around the surface of the material to create the engraving. So you'll notice that within the cutting parameters for the diamond drag tool, there is no cut depth specified. And the reason for this is that the diamond drag tools often come spring loaded, so that they're able to be ran over uneven surfaces. But this does mean that we're not able to force the tool down to a specific depth because it's going to be controlled by the amount of pressure that we can apply to the tool and how much compression is in the spring at that moment in time. Now there is a way to encourage more depth and we'll go over that shortly. Now other options that we do have for this tool in the database is the ability to specify the diameter and the angle along with the line width and the step over. So we're just going to go with the defaults for this tool so we'll go ahead and select that and we can see it's now been assigned within our quick engrave toolpath form. So a way that we can control or encourage more depth in using a spring-loaded tool is by using the depth or pressure option. Now this allows us to specify a depth which we're going to place onto the spring-loaded tool to then encourage more compression in the spring which will then force the tool or at least increase the pressure on the surface of what we're going to be cutting with the tool that we've selected. So for this particular example, we're going to go with a depth or pressure of 0.1. 
So that means that we can take the tool down 0.1 of an inch in the Z axis and that will increase more pressure at the tip of the tool. So the next thing you need to do is specify a strategy. So we have the outline or we have fill. Okay, so we're just going to start by looking at the outline. So that will just create a toolpath following the outline of each of those text entities. Okay, and then we can just simply go ahead and press calculate and we can see the result of the toolpath here in the 2D view. If we close out and then go into the preview toolpath form, we can actually preview that toolpath to see how that would look. Okay, so you can see the outline there and that doesn't look too bad. Okay, so let's have a look at a few of the other options within that form. So we'll go back into the 2D view and we'll double click onto the quick engrave toolpath. So now let's have a look at the fill option. Okay, so within fill we have the option to apply an offset strategy and that will just basically offset the vector inside to create that pattern or we could create a hatch strategy where it will fill the text uh, with a hatch at an angle that we specify in this form here. Now the handy thing that we have here for the fill strategy is the option to specify a step over of lines that we're going to be used to fill the text. For example, if we went with the offset strategy and we put in a step over of 0 0.025 in there and then go ahead and press calculate, you'll see in the 2D view it's going to fill as much as it can within an offset strategy with a 0 0.025 step over. Okay, let's have a look at an example of the hatch option. Okay, so with the hatch we can specify an angle, so we'll go with 45 degrees in there and we'll keep the step over the same and if we go ahead and press calculate, you'll see that now it's filled uh, the text with the lines that are 0 0.025 inches apart at a 45 degree angle. Now the other option that we have for the hatch is a cross hatch. So if we check that option there and then go ahead and press calculate, it will create um, another hatch in the opposing 45 degree angle. So let's just uncheck the option here to apply a cross hatch. And then let's go ahead and calculate that. And then we're just going to close out. And we're going to go into the toolpath preview. Let's just reset that preview. And then we'll go ahead and preview um, our newly created engraved toolpath. Okay, so remember, because we are using a spring-loaded tool, the actual depth that you may see on the actual preview here may not be represented on your part that you cut out. And so it all depends on how stiff the spring is being used to spring-load the diamond drag tool and the density of the material that you're going to be using. So let's just double-click on the quick engrave tool path and we'll go back to our 2D view. Now, some machines come with a nose cone and it works in a similar fashion to a spring-loaded tool in the sense that it's able to move freely and engrave over uneven surfaces, except the nose cone has the tool at a fixed depth below where it detects the top of the surface, which means that we can engrave at a fixed depth whether we are using flat or uneven material and therefore it improves the depth consistency. Now, when using the nose cone, we just need to specify some data in this section of the form here. So to enable the tool depth and the number of passes, we need to check this option here. So we'll start by inputting uh, the depth at which the tool is protruding below the nose cone. So we're going to leave that 0 0.02 in this case. And then we're going to specify the number of passes that it's going to attempt to get to our cut depth. So here we can use the arrow keys or we could simply type in a value by highlighting the number in this option here. Okay, and then we can simply go ahead and calculate that 
and then if we go over to our 3D view and if we just close out there and into the toolpath preview form we can reset that preview and we can preview the selected toolpath and if we just switch on the visibility of that toolpath we can actually take a look um, if we go up close here we can see that it's created three overlaid lines which represents the passes when using the nose cone. Okay, so let's just put that back in the Z view there. And so that's all there is to calculating a quick engraving toolpath. Now the last thing that we haven't discussed is the post processor option that's available in the quick engraving toolpath form. So let's just double click to go back into the form here. So we're looking at the bottom side here. So this enables us to quickly save out a toolpath and also if we have a machine that allows us to do so, we can actually output the toolpath directly to the machine itself. For example, a Roland EGX300 machine will enable me to do that. Okay, so going into the post processor, if I just type in the letter R, that will take me to all of the posts that begin with R, and you can see that we have the Roland EGX 300 post processor in there. And then what we do is we check this option here to output direct to the machine. Then we need to select the driver, and that's this option here. And it's this driver which will then communicate with the machine. So for the Roland EGX, it uses a printer driver. So we would simply select from the drop down if we had the driver installed. And then we'd go ahead and press OK. And it would send the data to the Roland EGX 300 as you would do printing a normal document to a printer. Where we would then use this option to output the toolpaths. So let's just close out of the form here. And so not only can we output the toolpaths in the form, but we can still use the traditional way of saving out the toolpaths using the Save Toolpath option. And you'll see in this form, we also have the ability to output the toolpaths directly to the machine, like we saw in the Quick Engrave Toolpath earlier. And so having the ability to output the toolpaths directly to the machine within the form just allows me to save out the toolpaths more quickly and more efficiently. And so that completes this overview of the quick engraving toolpath. So let's just go to File, Save As, and then we'll just call this file Quick Engraving Toolpath Guide 2D Toolpaths. Save it, and you can access that from your project folder.